Hi, and welcome to Boards Near Your Couches, uh, the show where we talk all about board games that you may play in your living room with your friends. Um, my name's Nicole. I'm your host this evening. Um, my co-host this evening is Kelly. Uh, he is a wonderful human being and uh, the designer of the worst board game I've ever played. So it is fantastic that he's here tonight to talk about board games with us. Why don't you come on out? Do you want to hear about it? Uh, I would love to. Let's hear all about it. So StreamYard has this fantastic feature where you can turn off your mic and your camera, just like Zoom does, but with the added feature of you cannot turn it back on. Just Perfect. not there. It's it's so cool. I'm so happy. It was a beautiful expenditure of my $25, which I found out as I was paying for it is in fact 25 US dollars. So I'm paying oh. good dollars. Yeah, none of those shitty fucking <laughs> weird duck coins that we have, so. Money well spent. I also think um, like there's something to be said for committing to turning your mic and camera off. Like, you know, like turning it off temporarily isn't much of a statement because you can always turn it back on, right? It's like calling up your ex after you've already broken up and being like, oh, I was just kidding. And then like coming back to you every time, it like loses some of the thrill and the appeal, you know? I, I just, now I just feel like you're attacking all of my behaviors and all of my hobbies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, anyways, on that note, let's talk about your board game. Yeah. All right. Um, so my board game is called. Um, hanging out with grandma. Mm -hmm. And basically you, you have a lot of, uh, it's a deck, it's like chance cards, right? And mm -hmm. you draw those cards and it's sort of like when you have truth or dare Jenga, except all of the truths are like, say a nice thing about an elderly family member. And mm -hmm. all of the dares are like, oh, I dare you to call your grandma and ask her how she's doing, ask her how gardening is going. Right. And yeah, I, yeah, okay. I'll I'll admit it is in the early stages, mm -hmm. and it's not perfect. But for you to call that the worst game that you've ever played, like I don't know if this is more of an attack on me or your grandma. Like I don't know if you want to discuss this, but I mean, I yeah, I, I should say it was the first time I've ever beta tested a game, so I like should give it a little bit of slack. Um, I guess I don't know. I uh, all my grandparents are dead, so I suppose it's like just not realistic for me to do that. Um, that like it just I didn't have a connection with the game. Um, but you well, know, yeah. But that's why there's going to be an expansion, which is basically mm -hmm. like a Ouija board. And ah. yeah, so that's how you can like call your dead grandmother. Like I mean, we can only print one game at a time. It's very expensive because everything's made of ivory. And do you know how fucking hard it is to get ivory these days? Yeah, I heard you have to go over and just kill the elephant yourself these days. Yeah, and like all of the tranquilizer drugs that they give me so that I can take down the elephant, like they just give them to me. And so of Ooh, course I don't put them- fun. I don't put them, yeah, in the gun. They just go into me, like maybe some of them I'll share with the elephant, but like that shit's also expensive, so. It has to be a pretty cool fucking elephant to share your drugs with them, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and if we're being honest, a lot of elephants, they're not cool, all right? What do you have elephants against elephants? Are, elephants like, are... One of the most beloved animals on the planet. They're always fucking whispering secrets. And this is like, they can whisper secrets from further away because they've got that trunk. And also the person they're whispering to has like a gigantic ear and they're and they're it's all over my head, right? So I, I they think I don't know, but I fucking know what's going on with mm. elephants. It's over your head, as in like you don't get it, you don't understand what they're saying, or you like don't know, realize that they're talking about you, or yeah, it's true on a lot of levels, isn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I it's physically higher than me, and it's also over my head in terms of like they're superseding my authority. 
Like mm. they're going over my head when I'm trying to, when I'm like, I'm the one with the tranquilizers. I'm the one with the tranquilizer gun. And I'm the one that's high as shit. And everyone just needs to listen to me and it would be fine. But they're again, they're going over my head. And then, yeah, it is beyond me in a conceptual sense as you're getting at, because mm-hmm. I just, I, I, I understand what they're literally saying, but I just have a hard time parsing the subtext in like, <laughs> right? <laughs> so right. anyway, we're talking a lot about my problems. I feel like this, mm. You know, this is your show, Nicole. So I don't want to make it about me. So yeah, what what do you what do you have for us tonight? Uh, oh, I was just uh, yeah, I was just gonna go straight out and bring out our GM and see if the three see if you had something that the three of us could chat about. But which oh yeah, yeah I'm sure the GM has something, something. Has yeah, no, I'm sure the GM has lots prepared for us to chat about. Definitely, I didn't. That's that's a thing that uh, I would never do. Let's bring out the GM. <laughs> A lot of those instruments kind of sound like elephants. Is that just me? Yeah, they're fucking infiltrating everything. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to see you, Josh. How's it going? Not too bad. I will admit that I kind of lost half the plot there, so I really don't have much to go on at the moment, to be completely oh. honest. Other than That's... elephants are cool. They're a little judgy, but they're fucking cool. So, uh... You know, Ju- judgy how have you been judged by an elephant? Is that how like, you like, see they, they remember shit and just hold it against you the whole time, you know? Mm, that's fair. They do, they hear that they can hold a good grudge, yeah. So, I mean, legitimately, they actually can't hold a good grudge. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. They've been known to go after people who have like hunted them before and they've gotten away from They've been known to just like see him again and be like. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> see, this is this get this gets me into trouble because I compared my uh, cousin to an elephant once, and she thought that I was calling her fat, but I was just saying she could hold a grudge. So she took it th- <laughs> totally the wrong way. I can't go to any family reunions anymore, because obviously she held that grudge. She won't let me live it down. Well, so he- I mean, it's, yeah. it's nice being right, though. Mm-hmm. What was that, Kelly? Oh, I got all sputtered up to talk, and then I graciously gave the camera to Josh, because he felt it, you know, really important to keep talking, and then immediately switched to his drink, so I'm extremely stoked on that. But my my question for you, Nicole, was is this the same cousin that I know? Uh, No. As you know, Kenzie does not hold grudges. Right. Because this... This is a funny story, and maybe this is a great way to segue into our guests, because our, our guests are game people, right? So do you, mm-hmm. do you want to introduce them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tonight our guests are um, designers of the game Dice Command, um, Sam Crystal, who is the founder of Ejected Planet, um, and Tyler Holman, who is a co-designer uh, and illustrator of Dice Command. <laughs> I hope you don't get tired of hearing that song. <laughs> Definitely not already Never. exhausted of it. Mm-hmm. No. So now astute viewers will note that the order in which you came to the stage was that Sam came out first and then Tyler. So yeah, do you two want to speak to the internal hierarchy? Sam can speak to that. <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I, uh, so yeah, I started Ejected Planet um, four years ago to start making games and uh, also other things. Um, and then I found Tyler, who was doing some cool game art things, and hired him. So when you say you're the founder of Ejected Planet, you mean like you actually find people, like it's like a it's like a finder of people. You said you found Tyler. Mm-hmm. So that yes. makes sense that that's yeah. your title is founder yeah. of Ejected Planet. It's kind of like a founder. I don't. <laughs> yeah, and I was uh, lost, and now I am found. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we brought him into the fold, and 
now we're happily making games. Wonderful. So when you say brought it into the fold, is Ejected Planet a company or is it a cult? I, which I guess those two things aren't mutually exclusive now. ML MLMs exist, but oh, how would you most describe it? We haven't launched our MLM product yet. Um, mm. Although we're thinking of maybe a cryptocurrency first, uh, <laughs> since that's more uh, in vogue right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely a cult um, of two members. So. That's all you need. Somewhere, right? that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tyler's devout. It's good. <laughs> I'll drink all of that Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so we did promise games, and the game I was going to segue into, uh, since Nicole brought up cousins, is this is a game Nicole invented. I think it's really cool. So uh, <laughs> oh, when so Nicole uh, introduced me to one of her cousins, and her kind of preamble for who is this person is. Yeah, I think she's one of my hottest cousins, or pretty much my hottest cousin, I think, was the phrasing. So I, I, let's follow that same turn order. Sam, you'll go first, and then Tyler, and then maybe Josh. Sam, who's your hottest cousin? Um, so I have, I have four cousins who are all sisters and are all extremely attractive and successful. And it's just known in my family that they are the the hot cousins. Um, there's, uh, you know, I think one's an RN, one's an engineer, one's a teacher. You know, they're they're all killing it. Um, and yeah, so shout outs to the Ellises. I appreciate that you distanced yourself from that judgment yourself. You were like, it's known amongst our family that they're the hot cousins. You weren't like, I think they're my hot oh, cousins. Oh, yeah. I have, I have an early memory of my, my mom, you know, coming in and showing me a picture of them and being like, look how pretty your cousins are. Aren't they, aren't they pretty? And I'm like, yes, they're very attractive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is definitely not going to build a complex of some kind. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, is that kind of the like scuttlebutt around the dinner table? Like when it's Thanksgiving and everyone's gathered around and people start filing in and, the kids are kind of around the table playing mm. crazy eights or whatever it is kids play these days. And they kind of start, yeah, dice command. They're playing dice command <laughs> and they start whispering to each other. Oh, hey, hey are, the, are the hot cousins coming? Are the hot cousins coming? I mean, is that the kind of, am I picking up on the vibe there? Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, they're definitely, you know, a, a party is a seven without them. And uh, everyone's looking for that 10, right? Yeah, I can't argue with that. So, Let's move on to Tyler. Tyler, who <laughs> it's your turn to play the cousin game. So who is your hottest cousin? And as a follow-up question, are they hotter or is no, are they hotter than Sam's cousins? And also why? Follow-up question. I have not met Sam's cousins. Um, but the answer is probably not. <laughs> um, I honestly I don't I don't know how to answer that. I uh, my cousins are all like Saskatchewan farm folk. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're not watching this, but can I be the hot cousin? <laughs> you can now. All right. I, I will just say I'm the hottest cousin. <laughs> among, yeah. Among the like our family. <laughs> yeah. So with that, we'll pivot to our GM because he is he, let's face it, if there's one person in this entire call who knows games and rules, it's Josh. So Josh, can you tell me if Tyler's answer is a cop-out? Uh, technically, I would say no, because he mentioned his family's from Saskatchewan, so there's probably a little bit of inbreeding in there, so it means that there, he could probably be his own cousin. Mm -hmm. I said this from the perspective of a Mennonite blood person, so I've really got no moral high ground. Yeah, no judgment here. <laughs> no, Nicole, you're from Saskatchewan. Do you want to speak to that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a true story. This is not a bit. My grandma once told me about how her mother, no, grandmother, um, her husband passed away, sadly, when she was, um, she said past her childbearing years, um, but I'm going to say that's like 30 um, and so she proceeded to marry the only eligible man in town, which happened to be her uncle. So can confirm 
Inbreeding is a thing in Saskatchewan. <laughs> By this one example, we have now proven. <laughs> hey, that's all you need. We've got five people in a room and one person has an inbreeding story. So <laughs> that's, <laughs> I think that's pretty good odds. That's 20% of all people here. And that's greater than the proportion of Saskatchewanites to all Canadians. So mm. to me, that's how math works. That's just how math works. Well, let's, let's take a survey. Who here is like ancestrally from Saskatchewan? You mean born and raised there? That's you're raising your hand for born and raised there. Mm. I most certainly was not, but as we've discussed, Debolt is not in Saskatchewan. I I still don't believe you, and I I never will. It's clearly a town in Saskatchewan. I've never heard of it, and that's pretty much what makes me think towns are from Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just the vibe, just the way, just the way you talk about it, and and, and kind of your vibe, you know, like there's there's a lot there, but I'm. I'm fairly confident. I don't know how I feel about that, but all right. All right, so Josh, it's your turn. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Well, so I usually don't tell these kind of cousin stories because my cousin stories usually get into like crime and meth, but I do have one cousin who is conventionally attractive, uh, but she's also an anti-vaxxer, so. I knew. I knew as soon as you were like, I'm trying to kind of put the camera on Josh. I was like, I know which cousin he's thinking about. Can confirm. Yeah. She hot. But also an anti-vaxxer. But also an anti-vaxxer, which is like minus points. Yeah, like I, I don't know where that puts it on the whole scale at that point. Like, because it's like anti-intellectualism, I suppose. Like you got to balance those two. Mm -hmm. But it's still better than uh, still better than Boston, robbing a Boston pizza while high on meth. So I mean, she's still not the worst cousin I have. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dig into that story. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much there is to tell. Uh, if you look into, <laughs> I mean, which title? Boston pizza? How much meth? Well, how I'm... hot is that cousin? These are the kinds of things we need to talk about. <laughs> have you guys ever seen the show Arthur? <laughs> he like... looks a lot like Arthur from Arthur. Like the Aardvark, right? Or yeah, 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 maybe yeah. the Aardvark. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe Aardvark. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it was in Grand Prairie, so you can actually look up this story. I'm sorry, Mikey. Uh, if you <laughs> Just look putting him on blast, full name and everything. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, he definitely robbed the Boston Pizza in uh, Grand Prairie, so that was exciting. I mm. found out, I personally found out because someone at work was laughing about it. And then show me the story. They're like, isn't that hilarious? And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm related to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I always, like, am concerned when I see a news article that says Grand Prairie Man. Oh, I know. Like, oh, I fucking know this guy for sure. Yeah. No, there's <laughs> there's been multiple, like, out of Grand Prairie stories. Where you're like, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. Nah. So, yeah. okay, so, so the next question was, how much math? I have no idea. Enough mm. that he looks very fucked up on his mugshot. Mm. And how much did he make out of it? I don't think he actually made any money. Mm, that's a shame. Mm. Yeah, he was high enough that really. he told us he hid under a blanket and thought that the cops couldn't see him. Yeah. So, pretty high. Right, you were there for that story. Yeah. Love that guy. Oh man, Mikey's hilarious. He's just <laughs> fucked up. Hi, he's cool. Well, that's all the questions I had about that story, but we can turn it to the audience. Uh, if you have questions uh, specifically about Josh's cousin, Mike, who lives in Grand Prairie, and you can definitely look up on Facebook right now, and his, arm was it armed robbery? I uh, mm -hmm. can't remember anymore, actually. And his potentially armed robbery, uh, allegedly, of a Boston pizza. Uh, <laughs> speak in the chat now. And speaking of the chat, we have our first comment from the peanut gallery tonight. Um, which comes from producer of the show, David. And <laughs> this is a perfect time to reveal uh, my latest banner. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks for tuning in, David. Yeah, he, he doubled our audience by tuning in. So we're, we're eternally grateful to him in every way. Ooh, who else is watching? It's not my partner. He's playing Luigi's Mansion. Three? <laughs> yes. Nice. Can does does he have enough time? Like, can you ask him who his who his hottest cousin is? I might be able to just tell you. 
You've been just like sizing them up for years, or? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you always got to look at like next of kin, because you're like, you know, like you like. I feel like there's like a certain percentage that your kids are gonna get the hot jeans, but there's like also like a percentage like of a chance that they might not. So you got to like look at like, you know, the other gene lines that happen and the family tree. Hmm. Sure. Oh, I thought I thought you were just talking about catastrophic backup plans. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, it's like if I, you know, if we get married and I decide to change my name and my last name is already like, yeah, already that, then I may as well just go for the easiest thing. He, he does have two brothers, so, I mean, there's okay. viable options. Isn't that what it's all about, is options? Mm -hmm. Yeah, always got to have a plan B. Thanks right. for understanding, Sam. So I think we should ask our guests a few questions about their actual game. So sure. um, if I could open by kind of just reading the description of Dice Command. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Fund your war engine and research powerful upgrades to ultimately deploy your army of dice to the battlefield and defeat your enemies. So it's very violent. It's kind of mean. I mean, this is this is a war game, is it not? Yeah. So I guess my I'm going to use the word concern, and I don't use the word concern lightly. Is this game feels like a very angry game? And I guess my question is: Is this what the country needs right now? I mean, you need an outlet, right? Uh, better, better to slaughter dice than each other. So we're helping. But, like, what if what if the game was what if the outlet was a nice game? Have you thought about making like nice games? I uh, thought about it, but um, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> like, it, it's not a it's and it's not about necessarily glorifying violence. Um, we actually like we're the war theme was kind of. An afterthought. Um, funny enough, uh, we started the game started as just like uh, dice on a black piece of paper with lines on it, um, and then we were like, "This kind of feels like war," and we went with that. Um, but yeah. So, so, and I know you did launch your game this past Saturday. So, for mm -hmm. a lot of intents and purposes, that is kind of late in the game to make changes, but. You know, we, we wouldn't really be ourselves if we didn't pitch you some new ideas anyway. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, Dice Command let's, too. Let's take yeah, let's take that idea because, I mean, first off, it's right there in the name. Why not just call it Nice Command? Can we start with that? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Actually, uh, when when I was uh, you know backstage listening to your grandma game, uh, I was like, that's nice. You know. So if if we make nice command. Uh, I'm probably going to steal all of those ideas because they're great. I mean, that wouldn't be very nice, but it is a good idea. I, I mean, I, I have a bit of a talent for nice games. I did get a certificate in nice game design, you know, from university. So, you know, I'm not just, I'm not just talking on my ass here. Yeah, no, uh, and we'll steal all of those. Uh, I think you're onto something there for sure. Okay, well now that you've started, let's just let's just keep rolling with it. You can just steal all this. So we've got nice command. We've got dice moving across the table. What, what can we maybe kind of let's start swapping out parts? So let's say instead of a battlefield, we're in like, I don't know, Josh, what's a nice place? A nice place. Uh fuck. Uh <laughs> not Grand Prairie. Not Grand Prairie, <laughs> yes. Let's start with let's start with where where there's not nice place. What about like a, a meadow of nope. wildflowers? It's it feels a bit close to a battlefield, but we could work with it. Mm -hmm. So maybe your dice are like they're honeybees. And mm -hmm. their their goal is to kind of move across the battle no, wait, move across the field of wildflowers and like <laughs> pollinate the other opponent's flowers and if you successfully 
Well, you know, it's just sort of, I mean, yeah, the, the intent of Are the game. Are birds in this as well? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like I just call it the birds and the bees. I feel like that's a title that means nothing else, and we could definitely use. You probably rip that one off pretty solidly. <laughs> I, well, I, I did like our pun. I'm wondering if we can call it the birds and the bees subtitle nice command. Mm. Maybe. I, I do have a concern. Um, you know, bees are slated to be extinct within probably the dev cycle of a board game. Uh, so I would be concerned that the market viability of a game that revolves around something that no one knows anymore is a little... Could the game be about saving the bees it could be but then the game isn't really nice it's kind of a downer and downers don't really sell either um that's so. i mean I, we did see a game in david's shop the other day um that was about climate change um mm. and i'm sure that's just flying off the shelves i'm sure david can cons can confirm that Everyone wants to. Everyone wants to play a game that reminds you of the crushing realities of everyday life. I think. So, what was it? Yeah. What was it? Just out of curiosity, like. Oh, that would be a David question. It's called uh, Tipping Point, I think, and it has oh. like a bunch of. Yeah, it has. I, th I think some wind turbines and some like refineries on it. It's. It, it just like it emanates the worst vibes. It's kind of like a black hole of vibes, just like sucking them in. I, it, every game that was next to it, I also didn't want to buy. <laughs> Actually, like that, uh, I'll probably check that out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, no. like no, no memes. Like I'll, I will check that game out. <laughs> so you admit that, that a bummer of a game is a seller. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of a bummer of a person, I guess. <laughs> oh, hey, as long as you own it. As long well, as I wish I would have known it. that. Oh. I wouldn't introduce you as that. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Debbie local Downer. bummer, uh, local bum, bummer, and game designer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that does kind of sync up, like with the war game. You know, you can just you could release a game that is like one for each horseman of the apocalypse. You know, you've got your war game. Uh, I guess climate change is kind of the famine game. Yep. And there's what's the other one? pestilence? I don't know what's what's the pe I guess pandemic is pestilence. So you could just rip off pandemic. Yeah, easy. It's already done. Just reskin. You know, just re rename it. You know. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's got to be a board yeah. game about that already. Oh, there's more than one. <laughs> what's what's the fourth? What's the fourth horseman? Death? The fourth. The fourth horseman is yeah. death, and I also I have some concerns with that. I know you. That's kind of outside of your purview, but it it does kind of feel like it's more of an umbrella horseman for the others. I don't know if you can speak mm -hmm. to that at all. Maybe Tyler, you've been quiet that you're waiting for your moment to shine. Here, I'll spotlight you. Oh, awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking of the taxonomy of the four horsemen? Would you change it? Maybe we can workshop this. Um, instead of death, his name could just be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like the nice horseman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they could be going around this, this proverbial flower field we were speaking of, and they could be growing more flowers for the bees. Mm -hmm. Can we just well for switching one because I feel like the three horsemen of the apocalypse and one horseman of feeling better about it. I don't know. Like I do love my jarring tonal shifts, but I feel like that's kind of our milieu. And I'm thinking at least if we're gonna start workshopping the horsemen, can we make them all nice? Like what are the four horsemen of good good vibes? I mean, hearty meals should be on there, right? Like something the opposite of famine. Nothing's better than just, you know, like the a, greatest meal. Like a big, like, Eastern European potluck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah. Hell yeah. And endless. Just. But then we're back to death probably at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So if the opposite of famine is a delicious meal, uh, the opposite of war is goddamn hippies yeah or maybe that's <laughs> bees pollinating flowers you know it's make love not war that kind of thing so mm -hmm. you've got the you've got the the horsemen of fucking you've got the horsemen of eating and sleeping the opposite of pestilence mm -hmm. we could maybe work that in as the opposite of pestilence the opposite of being ravaged by disease is just taking a nap 
I think that scans. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for the horseman of napping. I could be the horseman of napping, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I take a power nap at work like every day, so I feel like I can appreciate that. You work in a welding shop. Where do you nap? <laughs> in my office chair when I'm on break. Oh, okay. That's I good. was literally napping before I showed up at David's store. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unintended. <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about that because we were already kind of getting into the hierarchy and the power dynamic of how this company works. So I was sort of intrigued by how that plays into it. So you seem to have a system where when people want to deal with you both collectively as a business, they message Sam and then he doesn't tell you stuff. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that would be our horseman of communication. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, so my, maybe there's four horsemen of like you know not the apocalypse but like mild inconvenience and one of them is bad communication um one could be traffic delays the horsemen of traffic delays when you're sitting there you're already like you 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 felt like you left your house at the perfect time you're like i'm just i'm gonna slide into work like home base like perfect timing and then you get stuck behind like a semi or something that's learning how to drive and you're like fuck now i'm gonna be late Mm -hmm. That definitely didn't happen today. I'm I'm not pulling from personal experience here. <laughs> is it too specific to have a horseman that is of when you walk into a room and then forget why you walked in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like that's, name it happens really often enough. That well, you can also combine it with like going up the stairs because I I did that a million times at the old house where I'd go up the stairs and be like, I came here for something. And then walk downstairs, and literally on the last stair, I'd be like, right, that's why. Turn around, go right back up. <laughs> it's just your subconscious <laughs> tricking you into exercise. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I could use it. Hmm. What about the horseman of uh, trying to set up an internet connection for the first time, and like trying to book the appointment for the tech to come to your house? Oh, man, I, that was easy mode for me. Oh, God. I, uh, when I moved to this apartment, my friends were giving me shit because they're like, you haven't set up internet yet? It's not going to be like set up for a week. How are we supposed to game and all that stuff? And then like, I just went dark for like half an hour, came back. I'm like, I have an appointment set for tomorrow. <laughs> can, can I expand that and maybe just pitch it as the horseman of basically just all fucking technology? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're bad at it, yes. Yeah. Well, I am bad at it. And I believe it's because I'm being haunted by like uh supernatural horsemen well you could be like so, you could be like uh technological gremlins you know like the world war ii gremlins so the what oh that's where gremlins came from is that's what uh u.s pilots or not just u.s pilots but allied pilots would blame on like mechanical failures they'd be like oh it was gremlins you know like the whole sarcastic joke mm -hmm. so that's sort of where gremlins came from was uh they would allegedly fuck with machinery and make it like super fucked up and shit like that. And that's why you mm. had like random hardware failures. So I figured you could bring that into the software era. They could be like software gremlins now instead. So uh, as someone who has a BSc in uh, software engineering, that makes me a gremlin then, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> why? Cause you, are you saying you fuck up the tech, the software all the time? Uh, oh yeah. Oh that's yeah. Fair. That's, that's fair. on, that is partly on me at least a little bit. It's so are you the reason that fucking StreamYard sucks and the camera setup we have at David's store sucks and well, that's hard, uh, that everything I can't log into when I want to sucks? Like, are these all coming, direct, tracing back to you specifically? Uh, I mean, I would say yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, oh. They have a saying, if it ain't broke, break it. I think, I think I've heard that one before. <laughs> it's it's so Tyler. How do you fit into that hierarchy of like? Are you also like a sub sub tech gremlin to him? Like, are you the one coming and fucking up my Bluetooth? No, I am not a tech guy at all. I actually had to install Google Chrome before I logged in. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did that go? Um, fairly smooth. Uh, not not as smooth as I would have liked it to be, but I made I made it over that hurdle. We'll make it through this together. <laughs> so I guess, Sam, does that mean that you are the gremlin that made me forget to turn on my audacity and start recording this, uh, my audio remotely as well? Yes. 
Uh, okay. That makes yep. a lot of sense. It's okay. Kelly I'm didn't not... tell me, and as we all know, I'm illiterate, so I didn't even start it to begin with. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Well, and I don't want to point fingers, so I probably won't direct anyone's attention to the fact that I didn't tell anyone to do that. And also, that does just sound like another tech nightmare. So I may have already dropped the whole idea. This might be a Not collaboration between the the horsemen of communication and the tech gremlins. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to make like a like a four way pie chart thing of this, or not pie chart, one of those like circle charts, but four way yeah. instead. Oh, yeah. Venn diagram. It's phase one of their. Apology. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Thanks, English major. <laughs> Sorry, it's five. It's the five. What? What were you saying, Tyler? Oh, I said it's phase one of their apocalypse. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was thinking that it was more of a kind of like hierarchical org chart of horsemen. So you have the horsemen of inconvenience and one of the sub horsemen of that is tech. And then with the, under that horseman, you have, I guess, four gremlins. You have like hardware, software, firmware, and shit that's just clearly haunted. I don't know, Sam. Can you speak to that? Uh, yes, um, that is all true. Uh, the the haunted ones. I mean, they're the they tend to be the like the guys who got in tech really early. The guys that are pushing like sixty, seventy now. Uh, they've got you know the the, the long gray beards and. <laughs> hang out by the water cooler and talk about technologies that we haven't even heard of. Um, but they exist and they are equally fucking shit up as we are. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished Edward Snowden's book and he is describing exactly that person. Um, yeah. In those are places. Neat. Yeah. They're awful. <laughs> so with, with the time we have left, I, I wonder if we should get back to kind of finishing up nice command because they're, we did kind of get off on a couple of tangents before we actually flushed out. I'm going to say most of it. <laughs> so we've got dice. They're in a field. Are we mm -hmm. sold on the bees? Mm, you know, like being like, if we're keeping with the rhyming theme, we could definitely go with mice. And then it could, they could be like little tiny rodents. Going after the pollen and the f in the flowers. I don't the, know. The rodents are going after the pollen in the flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my snack on that shit. It's actually kind of adorable. Look up a picture one. That's time. pretty cute. <laughs> as long as it's not rats, we're not allowed to have rats here in Alberta. But I don't. I, I don't actually. Game. I don't even actually know what a rat is. To be completely honest, I've I, yeah. I, I've yet to see an actual live rat in person. I saw a dead one in Vancouver, <laughs> and and it was like. It was like my Alberta brain couldn't quite comprehend what I was seeing. Like the ge gears jammed for a second. Like seeing a color that yeah, like, like it just was, doesn't exist sort of like, thing. Right. Like my brain was just like, wow, that's a that's a really big mouse. And then like <laughs> my brain slowly started catching up. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's a rat. <laughs> well, you did just out your cousin in front of all of our viewers. So that'll give you an <laughs> idea of what a rat looks like. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No last name yet, so. Mm. You did tell everyone that they could definitely look him up, though. I mean, yeah, but you could have done <laughs> that anyways. You could have just said Boston Pizza armed robbery, and you would have found it anyways. <laughs> That's fair. So in that note, I think we should play a game called What is your hottest cousin's last name? And this time we're going to go in reverse <laughs> order. So Josh, why don't you go first? <laughs> I actually, because uh, that cousin I mentioned earlier, the one that is an anti-vaxxer, actually got married and I don't remember her last name because <laughs> expecting me to like remember things about my family is a fool's errand. <laughs> okay, so we've got let's let's we've got the mice, they're in a field, and what's kind of the obstacle in this game? Ideally maybe we don't even have an obstacle because it it is kind of the opposite of nice to be competing. Like, can we just have a system where you try to get the other player to win, but also you win? Isn't that kind of unrealistic to not expect competition when you play a mouse that is probably one of the most competitive existences? You have, like, 900 siblings. I yeah, can't imagine. I, I have trouble competing with two extra siblings, let alone, like, right? 900. It's, yeah, I have one. It's a nightmare. Can confirm. Mice eat each other all the damn time. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, you kill them for a living, Nicole. I forgot about that. I do. I do. I have the things too. I don't just. Yeah. I don't just murder yeah. them, but yeah. So Nicole, your life is mice command, and and I mean you're from Saskatchewan, <laughs> so you also know about rats. So why don't you kind of just like information dump on us here? Um. Right. So, um, mice can only see uh, colors that are fluorescent pink. Um, they are <clears throat> can range anywhere from the size of your pinky nail to the size of a football. Um, they can chew through anything um, from flower stems to um, wrought iron. Um, and they are the only um, amphibian with fur. Those are all true facts about mice. I learned so much. Did you today. say amphibian? Yes, I did. <laughs> you're you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, none of those things are true. <laughs> like, was literally. it was it just the last one that you picked up on? Because <laughs> like none of those are true. Wait, what were the first things you said? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and like I, you should. I don't up, remember because I made them up. Picked, yeah, mm. you should have picked up once you mentioned that they could chew through wrought iron. Mm. Man, I believe it. I should have picked a lot of things up, but I was also busy, you know, making sure that Nicole is a focus like this. <laughs> we love you, David. Don't leave us. Please, God. <laughs> Please, God, be here next week. <laughs> you are the glue that keeps this whole thing together. Mm. I mean, that's definitely the uh, impression you would love you to have. So, okay. Have we finished Nice Command? Did we complete it? So there's mice. There's a field. I mean, like, I still think we should probably have competition, but the competition could be just, like, you know when people are, like, super passive-aggressive to each other, so they keep trying to, like, up the nice ante? Mm. So there's your competition. You're trying to be the nicest person without coming off as that passive-aggressive nice person. Be like, like you know, they're, they, you, you pissed them off, like, last week, but you don't think you deserved it, but you bring them, like, a chocolate bar anyways, and you're like, yeah, like... That's my bad. I messed up. I should have asked more. And then you give them the chocolate bar. And then the next day they're like, no, no, like, you were right to, to, to ask me that. Uh, have a Red Bull or something like that. You just have to, like, ante up except your mice. So I don't know what you bring, like, cheese, peanut butter, um, your their dead wife that got caught in the trap. I don't know. Yeah, something to snack on. Yeah, exactly. Um, it sound, really sounds like you're speaking from experience on like how you handle your own personal conflicts. What is um, this, a psychology you, hour? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> next question is for Josh. Are you okay, man? Uh, in the words of every white straight guy, yeah, just living the dream. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> so I like that idea, though. Can we kind of take nice command but kind of just put nice in quotes i think actually the more i think about it maybe this is kind of taking us off the the path that we hacked for ourselves but a game whose kind of primary mechanic is passive aggressiveness what would that look like oh god have you ever seen mean girls it's a part of it you could almost represent it as like dice marching down a battlefield um, you know, sort of a push and pull tug of war thing. In an abstract sense, it's a lot like World War II in some ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it kind of sounds like we've come full circle. Yeah. And this passive aggression is we're basically ending up with dice command again. Yeah. So cool. what, what, what I think we've come to the conclusion then is that dice command is more than just about war. It could be a metaphor for any conflict in your life, really. Mm. So maybe this is just a lot more profound than we were letting on to begin with. Like I do play Dice Command very passive aggressively. Um, and it's just sort of a gift I have because I have played Dice Command. And Nicole, have you played Dice Command? Mm. I haven't had the opportunity yet. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. So I, yeah, I do like to play it that way where, you know, like whenever the person I'm playing against, you know, takes out one of my enemies... And was I that just... you practicing your passive aggression by telling me that that was interesting? <laughs> <laughs> Calling me out for not playing the game and then just switching just, away, kept the camera just, away? Just moving and moving on? Yeah, that was kind of my original intention with a bit, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought, I don't know if this is passive aggressive so much as it is just kind of like 
really dickish. But that's sort of the general flavor of our show, so I think it's fine. <laughs> it's a fine line. <clears throat> so, okay, so when I'm playing Dice Command, and like, tell me if this follows the rules or not. Uh, like, so my part, my 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 opponent will take a turn, and then it'll be my turn, and I'll you know, I'll say something like. Oh yeah, like it's fine. You can move there, and then they'll ask me if I want to still make my move, and then I'll say something like, "No, no, it's fine. You you just kind of like you just go ahead. Um, I'll sit this one out. Like I'll, I, you clearly need less time than me to to make your decisions. I'll just I'll just skip a turn here. Like that's that's built into the rule book, right? Yeah, it's encouraged actually. Um, <laughs> Extensively. So so I have a new pitch for the name of like the passive aggressive, like a way that you're playing the game. I'm thinking ice command. Because it's like mm. a frosty feeling. And you just like deport oh. a lot of immigrants in from the US. <laughs> I mean I think I feel like that is a game that's being sold on some like MAGA website somewhere. I mean and you can play Papers, Please, where you just demand, like, deny people at the border. Yeah, glory to Aristotle. Yeah, there we go. It is a real game. It's actually super good. It's a criticism. So it is oh, actually okay. a very good game. It's a very it's good a, game. It's a beautiful game, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you okay. knew about it. I'm actually pretty happy about that. Yeah. It's, it's actually a very fun game for torturing your friends who don't appreciate abstract games with and say, hey, man, do you want to try a game? And they just throw them in front of it. And they're, they say, what is this? And you say, this is a passport stamping simulator. And then you, <laughs> you have one less friend to worry about now. Like, it's great. You can, like, you know, not feed your family and watch them die as you perform better at the passport office. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's or you can, you can fight the system and lose. Yeah. It's very, very good stuff. Mm -hmm. Not soul crushing at all. <laughs> well, I think we've solved it. I think we, uh, I think we can all look forward to the expansions we're going to see to Dice Command and Nice Command. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for your spring launch of Nice Guy Command, in which uh, your opponent plays like a really hot girl, and you, play, you kind of do her math homework. And you do a lot of listening about her problems. And then you get to, like, halfway through the game, you get to open up your entitlement deck. And mm -hmm. then, uh, that, yeah, then, then the fun really begins. Mm -hmm. Also, one last pitch. What about Lice Command, where one player plays as your mother, putting that Lice shampoo and, like, slowly picking the nits out of your hair, and the other player plays as the Lice that are trying to take over your head? Just a thought. I think that's, I mean, it might be too close to home for some, but I think it's pretty on point. <laughs> Could be a one versus many sort of a asymmetrical yeah, yeah. battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Already thinking the design right here. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell Tyler's on board. I'll I'll message you about that later. <laughs> what if it could even be the mom? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the mom is sort of like sort of like the GM in that game, right? They're they're kind of coordinating everything, and everyone is just sort of like role playing a different louse. Mm. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think we got it covered. Um, I did promise that we were going to play some games. Uh, Nicole, did you bring any games for us to play? Yeah, absolutely. I brought um, a deck of cards. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get one of you guys to pick a card from my... Oh, that's not going to work through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I. That's all I had. Absolutely killer. You love to see the preparation that goes into this show. <laughs> All right, so I've got an absolutely nightmarish game. Do we want to play it? Well, we have like 10 minutes, so can we make it work? Absolutely. So this game is called Spoiler Roulette. And I think it's going to be a ton of fun. So are, are you guys... Yeah. <laughs> I'm not promising it's going to be a ton of fun. That would be a spoiler. <laughs> this is just a hypothesis that's probably wrong. So it's more of a misdirection. All right. So in this game, are you guys all seeing the same arrangement as me where I'm on the top left, Nicole's in the top middle, then we got Josh? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening? All right. So we're going to go in in order here where we'll move clockwise. And 
yeah, this this game is an elimination game. So one person is going to name a, a movie, a TV show, some kind of media property, a story. And the next person has to spoil it if they've seen it, which is sort of, that's the Russian roulette version of the, you got the bullet. And if you haven't seen it, you know, the gun just goes click, you pass it down to the next person. Does that make sense? How obscure uh, can I go with my movies? Well, the thing is, if nobody's seen it, then the game will never end. Okay, fair enough. So you want to name it. You want to name a uh, a story that the person after you will have seen, so that they will have to spoil it, feel great shame, and then they'll be eliminated from the game. Oh boy! Oh, here we but, go. But if if no one's seen it, don't you get eliminated? Shouldn't? Yeah, I feel like that should be the way around it as well. If no one sees it, then then you fucked up and you get kicked yeah. out. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> so. It's not going to be someone eliminated every time. So if you if you name something they haven't seen, then okay. you're just passing the gun down. Okay. Right. If the person if the person in Russian roulette doesn't you know get shot, you don't turn the gun back on you. All right. So I'm going to start with you, Nicole. Um, let's go with the first Lord of the Rings because I know that's the only one you know. Okay. So okay. So you're gonna. I'm just. Saying what happens in it, or what's you the need spoiler? To, in the you room? need to spoil the Fellowship of the Ring for anyone who has not seen it. Oh God, the Fellowship of the Ring. And that's on them at this point. They all run together. Boromir dies. There you go. It's a good one. That's a spoiler. That's a solid spoiler. Mm. All right, you're out. You're dead. Okay, Josh, you're gonna you're gonna name the next one. Uh, Last house on the left. I have not seen that. Fuck. I was going pretty, pretty big with that one. Well, last us on. No. Well, you live another day, so I guess. Sam, why don't you name something for Tyler to spoil? Um. Let's go internet classic, uh, Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Oh, God, which one is that? <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> the sixth one. Yeah, I think, right? I think that's, yeah, that's, yeah, the, I think that's the right one, right? Yeah, 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 that's the sixth one. I think I'm that's pulling, the right one. I'm pulling back from like 15 years ago now at this point. But Is that the one where his uncle's a wolf? That's no. the third one. <laughs> well, you, yeah. you, spoiled, you spoiled the third one. So <laughs> you just keep, you gotta keep getting spoil Harry's and Potter spoilers <laughs> until you spoil the sixth one. <laughs> just keep digging deep. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. I've... I've I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, and I tried watching either. them all like from start to finish, and I didn't finish part two of the last movie. I just didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Yeah. No, all right. That's, so that's uh, sorry. That's not a good movie for me. <laughs> all right. Well, you're now you have, you have a chance to eliminate Kelly now. Nicole, you're impartial. Do you believe him when he doesn't remember? Uh yeah. Hi, bye. All right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got to name a movie for Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could be a book. It could be a TV show. Oh, okay. It could be like an Aesop fable. Um, how about a graphic novel and movie? Uh, Three hundred. Oh man, uh, is it a spoiler to say all the Spartans die? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> although, although uh, you could just also just know the Battle of Thermopylae, and you'll be okay with that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, wait, let me let me try harder to spoil it. Uh, no, I mean there's there's not real a lot of nuance to it. I mean, you just you could say Leonidas dies. Yeah, Leonidas dies. All the Spartans die. Um, sorry to anybody who is rooting for the kid fuckers. So, <laughs> all right, and I'm very afraid to turn my camera off again. But all right, I'm out. I'm dead. All right, so I guess I'm up to try again. Uh, let's try something even more mainstream. Uh, fuck. Um, the Exorcist? A spoiler from The Exorcist. Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm pulling, like, I'm, I'm trying real hard right now. <laughs> it's been a minute. Uh... I I I don't remember. Like 
I remember her head spinning around. Like, yeah, I don't know if that. Well, that's not really a spoiler. Yeah, I mean, really that, a... I'm pretty sure that was in the like. I'm, the yeah, I'm like 99 percent sure that was just in the marketing. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm 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 hooped. I'm over two. Oh well, I mean, I'm just doing I'm doing bad at this. Well, you're up next. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, I know a hundred things that I could get Tyler on. Uh, let's do, Star Wars Episode 5. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that one? The Empire Strikes uh, Back. No, you can't, you can't give him that. <laughs> but yeah, episode, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. Um, you know what? I said it with Harry Potter, and you had to go with Star Wars. Star Wars and Harry Potter are like the really? two, it's like the two big movie franchises no. that I'm like, that was like not the... super into. I yeah, I'm like, I'm like movie. calling you out almost. You <laughs> it's funny because like episode five is like the one with like the big spoiler, so I like yeah. I like that one in particular. Mm, oh, that's the Wait. I'm your father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, does yeah. that count? <laughs> I don't know. Does that count? You bailed him out, so maybe he <laughs> yeah. survives. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's have a chance to kick me out then. Here. All right. All right. Uh, six best. cents. Uh, six cents. Oh, um, Bruce Willis was dead. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, my friend. Um, big reveal, man. Big spoiler. I'm like suddenly drawing a blank. We've talked so much pop culture. Um, what's like a... Oh. Spider-Verse. Oh, you want me to... Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to spoil it. Uh... They beat the bad guy. <laughs> oh, come all on. of them. <laughs> there's, there's a. Yep. All right, all right. You, the, no, no, that's uh, not what no. I was. That's not what I was looking for. No. Um. So uh, I gotta try and get you out now. Sure. I had one, and then I instantly forgot it as soon as you said Spider Verse. Uh. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, Mar yeah, uh, Marvel Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. It's the last one, right? Uh, no, okay, let's make it easier. Well, Infinity no, War. I, no, well, I, I can do Endgame. <laughs> I just need to remember which one. Uh, okay. Tony snapped back. Perfect. So now what? Do I have to make a movie and spoil it myself? <laughs> oh, no, hi, I just wanted back. to make you sweat for a while. Yeah, it's like, uh... <laughs> we have also completely lost Josh, which makes me think that I uh, awesome. killed him for real. No, no, <laughs> there he is. All right, let's. I Nicole, do you think it's time to bring out our GM? It's been an hour. Uh, yeah, I guess you know we could bring out our GM. Um, All right, let's, let's bring, bring out our GM. Josh, do a dance on the stand. That's all you're getting from me. Uh, let's talk about UI design and how you put the login button right above private chat and comments. So when I go click on between private chat and comments, I clicked on the login button, which just kicked me to a new window and out of the lobby. I'll take we, I'll take that to the Guild of Software Developers. Perfect, it, perfect. It truly has come full circle in that we get to shit talk this very questionable program that I've paid for again. And speaking wow. of questionable, that's you, Josh. I'm questionable, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Especially since I'm trying to see something and I'm wrong. But that's okay. No big deal. We're going to run a game today. It's... Uh, 
It's called the BUPS system. Um, so you'll have body, understanding, psyche, and special for your stats. Um, they'll basically determine you're going to roll your uh, D6, add a value, or two D6s, add your value, and that's how we'll score rolls. We are currently in an environment where dungeons are still explored by adventurers, but when they spend, like, weeks of time inside dungeons, they get kind of... They start missing out on that sort of food of home. So a lot of individual... Oh, Jesus, look at all those D6s. Uh, merchants will set up shop around the dungeon, waiting to give you that little taste of home as you come out there. Imagine what it's like to be us. We have to hear your voice for, like, two hours. Oh, my voice is great. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not used to it. You guys are. Uh, so, basically, on our last episode of BUPZ, -B uh, we had our heroes get captured by goblins, and our last uh, adventure sort of pissed off because he didn't get captured and he's a coward. You can tell James I said that. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to have right now is that as we move back into the story, it's been about two or three days since you guys were captured. Um, Nicole, I actually messaged you earlier because I don't remember your character's name and I forgot my notebook in my car. So, oh, Wait, I... wait, I've got this. I've got this. Yep. Wait, how's that spelling? Gone, Delph. Yeah. That's bad. No, you spelled it wrong. I need it. Hey, that David spelled that wrong. How do you spell it? It's gone down. G A A G A apostrophe A N space D apostrophe E L F. Perfect. So, doesn't matter. The moral of the story is that Gone has been forced to create snow cones for the hardworking goblins who are in the middle of their harvest right now, and they're when they have that sweat off their brow, they need snow cones. So that's over the last couple of days, you've just been making snow cones. Day in and day out. Mm -hmm. uh, our other character, Kelly's character, Angina, is currently being courted by the goblin shaman that kidnapped you both last session. His dowry gift, because he's intended to propose, is actually gone, like the person, as well. Oh. <laughs> That's a dowry gift, as well as a cart that seems to have appeared over the last couple of days filled with poutine and poutine meats. So as we get started here, for those who haven't watched before, let's get our first two characters introduced. Kelly, we'll start with you and Angina. Yeah, so my name is Angina Pectoris. And um, what do I look like? I'm packed in stacks, especially in the back. My background is spent years chaining one scheme after another to cheat my lovers out of their disposable income. However, I caught a little too much heat on the last one and I need to lay low in the last place anyone would think to look for me doing honest work. Um, yeah, my special unique talent is that I, uh, I'm hot as shit. And this is uh, extremely advantageous when people are into me, which nobody in this realm apparently is. Well, this goblin has been. Oh, that's right, yeah. And yeah, that's Don't throw uh, yourself short. The goblins love you. And of course, my character has a ventriloquist dummy named Endo, who has still not entered into the story. Don't worry, I have plans. Trust your GMs. I they always have I plans. was I'm I'm not I'm not harshing on you, Josh. I'm harshing <laughs> on myself. My only regrets are not using my dummy earlier and uh, trying to do a voice for my character. But there's no time to dwell on that. All right, so Nicole, you're next. Um, so my character is an elf slash wizard. Um, I'm working hard to put myself through wizard school, but despite taking out a substantial wizard loan, um, I've been, it hasn't been, been able to pay my bills and I've unfortunately been able to, or been forced to work part-time, uh, work a part-time wizard job selling frozen goat's milk treats for my parents' uh, ice cream business, the Fairy Queen. Um... What is your secret power? I believe you have Oh, yes. Of. Oh, yes. I have special freezing powers. I can freeze things um, that are approximately head size. Let's call them basketball size. Head, head size make, seems like it's made for violence, which it's not necessarily. Except which is exclusively <laughs> what it's been used for so far. <laughs> well, that's being used to make snow cones, so. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up, Sam, we'll get your character, if you would not mind. Uh, Sure. Um, so I am Gastron, 
I am a half elf um, ranger. I have a chiseled jawline and athletic build. Uh, I people have been known to say I'm smug looking, but that's their problem. Um, I was once a skilled hunter. Uh, I worked uh, as a protector and civil servant, uh, but then I was pulled into the private sector by the allure of gold and the smell of gravy. Uh, I now hunt rare beasts for toppings uh, for the most exclusive poutines for our business, Beasts du Fromage, uh, where we cater to very evil, very wealthy individuals um, to make uh, quasi-illegal poutines. Perfect. Okay. And last but certainly not least, Tyler, what is your character? Uh, my character's name is Donarius. <laughs> I love it. That's wonderful. Uh, I am a necromancing rat folk uh, with a passion for cooking. I decided to abandon the long line of family traditional necromancing and pursue my passion of cooking fine uh, killer poutines. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, just some dickhead. That's that's basically it. Uh, all right. Apologies, <laughs> Josh. I will fix that for you right now. Perfect. I mean, let's keep this thing authentic, at least. We don't <laughs> want to lie to the people. Mm -hmm. all we right. never would, and we never will. Exactly. So, without any further ado, I've got my paperwork here. Let's go. So... As you think back over the last couple of days of your hard, hard labor, Gond Elf realizes that they really fucking hate making snow cones now. It's been two to three days of just goblin after goblin coming in sweaty, smelling like the field, asking for a snow cone, and not even tipping. Would you say that they Im are immediately goblin them up? Shut the fuck up, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Um, and you you curse the fact that Angina seems to just be enjoying the easy life right now, being courted by a goblin shaman. And so I know a good piece of shit. Right, right. <sighs> Sorry. And, and Angina, you enjoyed the attention at first, but as the days have worn on, you're kind of looking to move on. You're not the type to sort of commit to one person or one place for too long if I'm reading your character correctly. So your plan now is to try to get out of the situation with as much money as possible if I'm not, if I'm reading you right here. It's incredible that me. Angina does not respond to their, uh, their title oh, at all. Oh, me, I thought you were talking about <laughs> Gotta remember your name, Angina, Jesus Christ. So do I have to repeat my entire monologue here, or are you still just staring into space? It's incredible. This is really great. I really appreciate um, talking to someone, and they have no interest in what you're saying whatsoever. <laughs> is this camera frozen? I think his camera might be <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Kick him out of the game. Get him out. It's okay. We can work around this. <laughs> He goes off to the goblin's tent and ducks into it with them, and we we don't see him for hours. Exactly. Perfect. I'm going to quickly type this in the private chat, though. The tech gremlins strike again. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. In the meantime, hopefully Kelly doesn't kick the kick, kick in the technical difficulties thing here, but anyways. Mm. Oh, he's totally gone now. He gone. <laughs> so, gone. As you scoop yet another... Strawberry flavored snow cone, your 20th of the fucking day. Christ. You hear the sounds of struggle and the creaking of a cart move past you. You see a ratkin and what looks to be a fellow half elf in, well, they're bound up with rope, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you make like a square knot, you kind of fuck it up. So you snap the rope a little bit and you got to draw another. It's very shoddily done, basically. Uh, and it seems to be a cart that wafts with the smell of rare meats, fries, and gravy. Ooh. 
you lock eyes with the two of them as they pass on by. And one of the goblins sneers, here's the rest of the dowry. Ooh. Um, okay, quick question before we get started here. Is this like a ratatouille situation where you're like on his head, like pulling the strings because you're like <laughs> the chef mastermind? Or is this like you're you're a man-sized rat? No, it was a ratatouille situation I was going for. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad. I'm an excellenter, so I employ uh, fresh, fresh <laughs> corpses to do my bidding. My oh, cooking. No, it's not me. He, he has an army of the dead. Oh, okay. Gotcha. No. Yeah, Wonderful. Gotcha. But I it better, is it I is better, a ratatouille sitch. Yeah. I better make a, I better make a note of that. Just perfect. My pen is out of ink. One second. Yeah, are you rat sized? Like, are you like? Do you hop on them? <laughs> I haven't decided. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I like that bit. I'm 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 gonna have I'm gonna retcon this uh, retroactively. You're actually already on top of a corpse. <laughs> and, you're, and you're puppeting it like a ratatouille situation. All right, that's happening now. Perfect. Mm. Perfect. Uh, cool. What I miss? Anything oh, good? Oh, and John is back. Perfect. Well, I was trying mm -hmm. to set up the plot a little bit, and then one of my plot characters just up and disappeared. Yeah, you know, it definitely has because we just moved into a magical world where, like, goblins and gremlins are real. So I'm wondering if the, we kind of bridged the worlds there and the goblins came into my internet and actually fucked it up. Because oh. it just dropped. I don't know why it came back. I know why it left, and that's Gremlins. Why it came back? Couldn't tell you. Naming calls. We've talked about them too much. Now it's uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's That must be what Tyler does. Sam's the gremlin. He ruins all the tech. And then Tyler fixes it all and pretends that nothing happens. So that mm. specifically, so not because he's trying to help be helpful, just because he specifically doesn't want us to know what the problem is, so that we never suspect Sam. It's it's like when you look in a forum and it's like uh, someone's like, "I have this problem that you are you are exactly having," and then they post <laughs> right after, they're like, "Never mind, I fixed it." And you're like, "What did you fix? <laughs> how, how, how did you do it? <laughs> Why couldn't you type more?" <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, anyways, Angina, now that you're back, we can continue on a little bit here. So yeah, I believe you were bit. giving me a prompt right as my internet cut out. I and, did. Uh, yeah, and that's why, I, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I said that uh, you've been being courted for the last couple days. Um, Gondelf was actually part of your dowry now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are not used to staying this long around anyone for any time. So you're basically probably looking to get out of here with as much money as possible and just call it a day. If I'm reading your character correctly. Yeah. How do the dowries work in this? Like, I don't know. Is it like village by village? Is there a whole like provincial statute? Well, this dowry is basically this, uh, this goblin shaman is just basically stealing anything that's not nailed down. And that includes people. Uh, mm -hmm. And just that's adding to the dowry. So I mentioned... Well, I guess that leaves me out. <laughs> probably easier to steal the nailed down people, though, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> As a necromancer, I guess, yeah, you would yeah. know. <laughs> You'd know the logistics of it all. So I mentioned that, as if on cue, there's a cart being rolled in that smells of rare meats, fries, and gravy, and two more people being held in bindings. Uh, one is a half-elf looking ranger type, and the other looks to be a corpse, and the goblins mm. have noticed that there appears to be a rat on top of the corpse, puppeting it so it continues to walk like it's bound up. The rats present this cart and the two occupants of the cart with a flourish, and the shaman goes, here's the rest of the dowry, my dear. How do you feel about my gifts? And, and then these two, uh, Gastron and Daenerys, are uh, driving that cart? Yes, yes. Well, the corpse is technically driving the cart, and Daenerys is driving the corpse, because he's a necromancer. Um, and a rat. I, I'm at this point, I'm just kind of... So, like, this has been, like, how long has this, like... Just two to three days of just exhaustive, of just exhaustively trying to impress you. Yeah. So at this point, I'm riding by out of pine. I'm like, oh, that'll do fine, dear. That'll do just fine. Why don't you, uh, why don't you put them over there? And I gesture towards, uh, I guess, the like an abandoned looking tent, like the the least the least trafficked looking tent. 
All right. And uh, is there anything that our two new occupants want to say, Gastron or Daenerys? Do you want to sort of argue with your capture? I mean, you guys aren't slaves. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I'll... Uh, um, I'll look, look to him and be like, do you know... Do you know who we are? Have have you heard of of our our endeavors? Uh, this is this is the renowned beasts du fromage. So I I, I grab Gastron's hair and just kind of slam him down while going silence. You I have none of this. And I kind of like go down to grind his face into the dirt, but I whisper in his ear like, "Hold on, my friend. I have a plan. A plan." Okay, so if that's the case, I'm going to have you roll a body, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And because that understanding, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have you roll an understanding, Gastron. Okay. <laughs> uh, 2d6, right? 2d6 uh, plus your modifier or minus Is, your modifier. Are you having him roll to see if he understands the nuances of my extremely subtle messaging? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, I got a, I got a five. A five, okay. And what I got did you a get for body. I got I got a kicking body, but I rolled a four. You rolled a four. Mm. Okay. So while you tried to like really sell the push down, the ranger is a lot more strong than you expected. So it kind of looks like you kind of half ass it and whisper into his ear. The goblins don't appear to notice, but it just kind of makes you feel embarrassed. Uh, you, however, Gistron, got the message because it wasn't very subtle. But you understand that th this this random person that this goblin is trying to sell you to has a plan you hope to free you? Okay, I, I, I just get up really suddenly and be like, very, very, uh, you know, I, I don't know, bothered by the, the whole situation, just yeah. throw my chin up and, because uh, I'm bound, my hands are bound, I take yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I just throw up. I, I just throw my body up and and strut uh, back behind the poutine cart and just. <laughs> All right, perfect, perfect. And gone. Uh, you finally served your last goblin, and you hear this commotion going on. So, what is your plan here? Um, am I like free to roam about the camp, or am I like chained to the desk, or sort of you, thing? You are free to roam within reason. There's always like a little goblin behind you with a spear, just kind of like keeping an eye on you. I thought I had her tied up. Well, yes, but she's been working on snow cones for three days. You can't have you have to have your hands free. Wow, God, fuck the it. first time I you shit my pants, inch, they were like, this isn't, gonna, "This isn't going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> we got to let this guy go." I was training your pets for fuck's sakes. <laughs> um. Okay, so um, I'm going to make an attempt to like approach. Um, and uh, I don't really trust Angina. I'm going to make an attempt to approach these newcomers. Okay. And see what their deal is. Okay, so uh, you you don't have to roll for that. You approach the two as they're being led to this this uh, deserted tent. What are you gonna say? Um. So I look at the guy, the the dead guy. I haven't noticed he's dead yet. I walked up and I go like, "Yo, yo, dude, what's your deal?" And then I look over and go, oh, oh Jesus. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, what's your guy, what's your guys' deal? How did you how did you end up here? How are you going to respond to that, Daenerys? <laughs> um, uh, I, oh, man, I don't know. I've literally never played D&D &D before, so I... It's all good. Just yeah. go with, There's no, like, special or particular way to do this. Just if someone came up to you it was just like, and you were tied up with something, you'd be like, yo, what's your deal? How, just talk how you would talk, basically. There, there's no need to make it special or anything. Yeah, if you were a rat controlling a dead guy, just put <laughs> yourself you in those shoes. Super, super simple. What would you say? <laughs> uh, I, uh, what, what did you say to me? You said, hey, what's your guys' deal? Yeah, what's your guys' deal? How how'd you end up here? What's your plan? Are you guys like looking to escape? Can we like buddy up? Um, so I would pilot the dead guy over to you, and then I would lean over and... I could squeak into your ear. <laughs> mm. um, my my plans that I really don't have a plan, and I am just in this to see what happens. <laughs> That's okay. fair. 
Okay. Do I uh, do I have to roll understanding to see if I can fucking understand rat? I was actually gonna say roll a psych because this is like such a shock. This is like just kind of boom out of nowhere. Okay. <laughs> I have a minus one psyche, so that's bad. Here um, we go. Oh, it's two d six. So, oh, okay. I got a ten. A ten, perfect. So you withstand the the initial shock of realizing that you've been talking to a corpse. And you see the the brat above just piloting it, and you you don't even show shock really. You're more or less like like you have that little sharp and take a breath like oh kind of deal, and then you continue on your on your normal business. Oh okay. Yeah. Do I can I like wander over to the, can I wander over to Gastron and try and like get more information out of him? You absolutely like, can. Okay, I'm gonna do that. As she does that. I, I want to try and play off my inability to really slam him down using kind of my persona, which is kind of being like weak and helpless anyway. Okay. So I, I as I am unable to really put any muscle into him, I kind of call loudly to everyone around me just saying, oh, why am, why am I being left to keep these in line? Okay. Well, so I'm big and strong. Please help. I'm going to get you to roll your special then. My magic? Yes, because it's your special ability. That's part of the magic. Sure. Uh, I got 10. 10, perfect. So your calls not only bring the shaman, but about like half a dozen other rat or uh, goblins behind there that are all sort of at your attention now. Cool. Um, so I'm going to just make the same demand. Um, I know Gandalf is still approaching about to do something, but I'm going to demand these two. They'll be, put them to work in the galley over there. And I just, I motion back to the same tent in the corner. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, they were already headed over there, but now you have an escort going that way? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I just, I just want, I just want them out of my sight and into this tent. Is that All so right. much that? Oof. Well, they're in the tent now because they've been walking and talking the whole way. So, what was your plan after they hit the tent? Uh, is the is where's Gondelf right now? Gondelf is with them. Okay, so I'm gonna follow them in there, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just fully bridezilling, and I'm just gonna shoo all the goblins away. Be like, I've had enough. You've disappointed me for the last time today, and then I just like close the tent doors behind me. All right, sounds good. Uh, while that's happening, uh, Gon, you had started a conversation with guest Strawn, so we'll say this happens just before Angina shows up. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, being like a, <clears throat> um, you know, a kind of a backwoods wizard slash elf. I uh, realize that I've kind of like been uncool about this like corpse rat situation. And I'm like trying to be chill about it now. Like I like I like I've seen this before, and like it's like not a big deal because I'm like kind of a petulant like late teenager. Um, anyways, so I approach uh, Gastron, and I'm trying to do it with a little more like finesse. And so I'm like, "Yo, man, what's up? Uh, where are you guys from? What's going on here? What are you doing?" Ah, uh, yes. Um, well, see, it's it, it's a. I'm not treading any toes. Sorry by backstory, right? Like, I'm good. Oh, no. Yeah, cool. Give her. Right. Fucking All right. fired off. So, um, basically, uh, my friend and I here, um, Donarius is the finest poutine chef uh, I've ever known. Um, I came to grow a love of hunting rare beasts, and we figured this was a match made in heaven. Um, however, in our most recent a uh, catering job, uh, I couldn't find any dragons. And the the uh, the lord we were serving uh, only eats dragon. Um, and we tried to play off some chimera meat. It, it didn't work. Uh, one thing led to another. And here we are. Mm. Gotcha. So you guys are looking to get out of here, and like maybe we could. Do you want to like team up and try and get out of here? I'm I'm really sick of making snow cones. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, we love the cart. The cart has to come. Mm. Um, it is it is part of us. 
Uh, and I think Donarius would be heartbroken um, without it. But uh, yeah, I mean, Donarius, what do you, wh how do you feel? Uh, I feel like the cart has to come with us because it is full of my puppet corpses that are waiting to be animated. <laughs> and without them, I am rendered useless. <laughs> it's fair. Well, that's very fair. All right. And on that note, now Angina comes in with their Bridezilla affair. Mm -hmm. uh, so now you've all united under one banner in your desire to get the fuck out of this goblin camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I kind of shuffle over to them and I'm like, all right, quiet, y'all, quiet. I have a plan, but we have to do it quickly. We have to switch clothes. And I, I just start like pulling off my clothes and I'm like, yeah. You two, you two uh, uh, new folk. I, I don't have time to know your names. Just switch clothes with us. Um... Do it, do it. I just start like pulling their clothes off. Okay, if you're going to successfully do that, we're going to have to have opposing body rolls here. So, body roll for Angina, Daenerys, and Gestron here. If, if he successfully manages to, or she manages to successfully remove your clothes. So I got a 10. You got a 10. So, yeah. I also got a 10. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and with ties, defenders usually win. So, Angina, you're pulling out their clothes, but you're not able to quite get them off, and they just mm. go off. Um, help me, God, help me. And the, the corpse almost does it like in like a, a Kung Fu John Wick way, where like you go to reach and the corpse just sort of slaps your hands away because Daenerys's puppeteering skills are so good. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they, they are very finely tuned at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, as as a as an arrogant, attractive half elf, uh, used to having his clothes ripped off, uh, you get like halfway there until I realize what's happening, and I swat you away, and I'm like, "No, be gone, <laughs> be gone." Do you thought. have a better plan? Me? I oh. I'm I'm speaking to kind of both. You know, all three of you. I just look at all of you, still naked, and I'm like, "Who's got a better plan?" Because they'll be coming for us through that door very soon. I so, would say step one, put your clothes back on. And my clothes are like some kind of, and you can, you know, stop me if I'm wrong here, Josh, but some kind of ceremonial, like pre-wedding gown. Yeah. Where I would, it, it's basically like, like the whole Southern Belle, like over the top gown dress thing. Yeah, I was kind of thinking it was that like version of a wedding dress is my dress, but I'm wearing one of those kind of robes that boxers wear oh, over top of it. And it's got like my name emblazoned on the back. <laughs> and that's like, yeah, so I'm just going to like, well, I mean, that's what is what I was wearing. Now it's all on the ground. So I quickly turn the my robe inside out and the it's double-sided so the inside is like it's the opposite color scheme and instead of my name across the back it says no one important <laughs> and right, i'm like right. please someone take this and i since no one has given me their clothing i want to look around the room for like anything that i could use to improvise as clothing even just like a sheet that i could turn into a toga okay so man i've never really figured out what perception checks will be in this rule set let's just go with understanding fuck it god if only there was a written rule set that you that could look I, at. I am illiterate we have gone through this mm. that's just my character at this point you're right i am being ableist we're just trying to include <laughs> we're trying to be really inclusive of people who refuse to read anything at any point exactly uh so what'd you roll there kelly what am what am i rolling understanding <laughs> Sure. Um, so that is a another 10. Another 10. Jesus, do you have like loaded dice here? Well, do yeah. I need, do I need to inspect these dice? My character is a known scammer. I mean, what did you expect? <laughs> That's fair. Uh, you managed to find some... They look to be old clothes from an old kidnapping victim. They're very discreet. They're like raggy, but not like like not rags per se 
they look like something like a good working man would wear or working woman. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't flatter one's body when you put them on. That's, that's exactly what I need. Is there something that we can use to like cut my hair off? Like maybe a sword or some scissors or I don't know. Do fire. I, does our ranger have anything? Maybe a <coughs> Donarius offers to just rip it, um, <laughs> and then proceeds to puppet the corpse towards you with hand outreach. <laughs> and I say, "Who, sir? Don't threaten me with a good time, but you'll need something sharper than that." <laughs> All right. Well, if I learned anything from um, Cool Runnings, it was that if hair gets cold enough and frozen enough, it'll snap right off. So mm. I kind of feel like I should try to freeze it, and then we can try and break it off. Does Angina consent to this? I bet, well, first off, that's 100% accurate in how it works. So <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm wanting to be out of here. I really like have flown too near the sun on flirting with people, so I'm just... I'm way into making myself as invisible as possible. All right, roll your special then, Nicole. We're going to see if we can freeze some hair. All right, can I get someone to hold that hair straight out so that I can get a better target here? Uh, I offer to do it because if my hands get frozen, that is okay. <laughs> Don't like go. the vote on confidence, but I'll take the help. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Vote of non-confidence was fair. Am I rolling body? Uh, no, that was your special. Oh, right, my special. Right. Um, so I got a four. Okay, so instead of... It's a good thing we use the undead person to do that because <laughs> instead of hitting the hair, you oh, completely gross. misfire and hit the arm that's holding the hair <laughs> and freeze it solid up to the elbow. Neat. So... Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say... Uh, don't worry, everyone. I got this. Uh, I take my unfrozen arm and chop off the frozen arm, um, revealing a shattered but very sharp... Um, what are those forearm bones called? <laughs> <laughs> radius and all Yeah. There we <laughs> uh, go. Revealing very sharp radius and all And I then proceed to use those to cut uh, angina's hair. Hell sort yeah. of an inverse 127 hours is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you I thought you said you never played this game before. Yeah, that's, that's I love awesome. that creativity. That's perfect. All right, so now uh, Angina has short hair. Okay. Uh, so can we like maybe sneak out the back of this tent? Is this I... there? Is there a way that we, can we like do a perception check and see like if there's if there's a sneaky way out of the tent? Before yeah. we do that, I gather the hair and put it into my corpse's pocket for later. All right. <laughs> also, do you take your nice. arm with you? Or just the uh, hair? Just the hair. <laughs> oh, okay. And Gastron, you had something to say here. Yeah, can I get cut loose? I'm still bound over here. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> just watching all this chaos. Yeah. Oh, well. Daenerys, yeah. Uh, Daenerys, do you want to free your uh, compatriot here? Um, I do not have any sort of tooling or weaponry that would help me in this task. <laughs> Got your your, your, your sharp your sharp, sharp or your sharp bone thing. I well I can attempt to cut off your hands as well if if you like, but that probably mm. won't benefit the party. Uh, uh, I, what I think we need to do is uh Daenerys, you mind rolling an understanding roll here. <laughs> uh four. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. is not quite getting what Gestron is implying. Where <laughs> it's just not quite clicking. He's like, the hands, like, I can, if they're bound, I can just cut those off. I, you won't grow them back, though. <laughs> like, it worked for me, so it should work for him. <laughs> so, no, no, we can use his bindings to our advantage. Is there like a large stick in the room of some kind? Like maybe a like any kind of pole. There's a uh, there's various rakes and whatnot. If you can uh, snap the end of a rake off, you'll have yourself a wooden pole. Okay, yeah. Um, can I just attempt to like snap the rake off in some way? Yeah, I'm just gonna say that succeeds because it's all right. It's gonna be so, a low enough check that you'll definitely succeed. So what I want to do is kind of take the bound gastron and hang him from the pole 
Oh, the yeah. Wooden Luau pole. Like he's, yeah, like he's a luau pig. And maybe like if he's, I'll ask him, like, sir, please, we need to cover you in barbecue sauce. Can we take off your clothes? I will reimburse <laughs> you immediately. So gone, having had to go through like consent training in his like orientation for his <laughs> wizard frat is like, ah, that sounds like a bad idea. And maybe you should stop pressing people to take their clothes off. And I, so I just slather him in barbecue sauce over his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only if it's my gravy. Mm. Oh, so he's, he's demanding the gravy, not the barbecue sauce. Which yeah, I'm already on it. That's I I cool. I have very poor culinary understanding, and I grabbed his gravy thinking it was barbecue sauce. Mm. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so you're slathered with gravy now. Cool. Hung up on a pole. What yeah. What is your guys' plan here? So I have a disguise. Gastron has a disguise. <laughs> Are either of you properly disguised? Mm. Mm. I have a suggestion. And I, I, I take out my ventriloquist dummy spanky. <laughs> and I... What, what kind of clothing are you wearing, Nicole? Um, I'm wearing, obviously, a prison jumpsuit because I've been enslaved for quite a while. Um, it's like a navy blue. Um, and it has like just a number on the breast here. Perfect. So I just kind of like tug the jumpsuit over her head and place Spanky like on her shoulders so <laughs> that she's still walking around in the jumpsuit, but the ventriloquist <laughs> dummy is sticking out the top. Right, 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 right. I'm into and, it. Yeah, so I and uh, I instruct her on how to operate the ventriloquist dummy with her teeth so that the dummy's mouth can move. And I say, I'll oh, handle the voice. You just flap those jaws. All right. All right. So if that's the case, I'm going to say that you guys, because most of you are disguised, I'm going to say that you you get out of the tent and you're starting to sneak away from the goblin camp when you hear a bunch of goblin screams of despair and the battle cries of some adventurers. It appears to be a raid. Ooh. Now, none of us are goblins, right? No. Uh, but this sounds like a great way to escape. So I think... Me and uh, Gondelf will pick up the stick to carry Gastron. Mm -hmm. And like Donarius is a corpse, right? Yes. Well, uh, he's a rat controlling a corpse. corpse. He's but... a rat controlling a corpse. Right. So can we can we just maybe put was there a, a mop next to the rake? Uh just the rake, I'm afraid. Okay. So I take the rake head and put it on top. I put it on the rat like a crown. Okay. And uh, I, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now it's, now it's the Rat King. <laughs> uh... <laughs> All, right, All right. So you guys have got disguised. There is a distraction happening with some adventurers. And you hear the goblins beseeching their, anyone around them and cursing their bad luck as the adventurers have come to raid their fields once again. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of whisper to Gon, Gon, stop, stop flapping the jaws. We gotta, we gotta alert people to the distraction. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so I just start clenching my teeth rapidly to make it look like the ventriloquist mouth is moving. So as she's doing that, I'm going to speak as Spanky. Okay. Oh, Lord. Oh, look at all the folk coming in. You better run for your lives. Oh boy! Oh, they got big sharp swords. <laughs> All right, let's go. We gotta go the other direction. No, okay. we'll go against the flow of traffic. Let's roll. Uh, let's see. Um, because it's uh, performance. Uh, roll me a body check there, Kelly. Let's see how well your performance lands. I feel like I'm gonna review all this video later to see if there's any correlation between what we do and what you ask us to roll. <laughs> that's body yeah uh that was a five a five well you don't quite sell it as well yet some people are running towards the adventures in the field but a few of them stop and wonder what you're doing with uh a gravy covered body and i scream walk out of town oh yeah and uh, I, I say, I'm going to disguise my own voice because I don't want to be identifiable as the Northern Belle. 
and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cry out in agreement with the ventriloquist dummy and say, <laughs> "Oh yeah, we're getting out of town real quick. We don't want none of this trouble. We're taking our best pig, and you can't have none of it." And then yeah, I just I just start pulling and like we're gonna motor up the hill. Okay, and everyone else, how are you responding to these plans? These events happening. I feel like, are we going towards the cart, or no? Well, you can't go away from the cart. They mentioned that the cart was very important. Yeah, that's said. what I mean. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess I don't really have any options, because I can't see where we're going, because my <laughs> jumpsuit is up over my face, so I just basically go where the stick's being pulled. I'm kind of All stumbling right. after it. And, Kelly, are you headed towards the cart, or were you headed away from the cart? Can... What's the, like, limit of Donarius's power? Can he... <laughs> like animate multiple corpses i can animate one corpse to make the deadliest poutine in the world <laughs> or i can animate five corpses to make five mediocre poutines so it's like a paw in each one and then your tail <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna look down at donaris donarius and i'm gonna whisper once these folks start dying how many corpses could you summon to pull the wagon for us at least four. <laughs> At least four. Are you particularly attached to this one-armed corpse? <laughs> Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should do that. <laughs> uh, so, are are there corpses now? Like, are we uh, still around? Yeah. Can we I just think... wait for like the chaos carnage to start happening, and then like surely people are going to die, right? Goblins well, are going to die. Well, Maybe goblins are better. dying. Uh, goblins are definitely dying. From these adventures that appear to be just killing them wanton with no wanton killing with no no sense of the the people they're killing. They're just goblins after all. They're just goblins. I, I do Jesus have Christ. a counter plan uh, to our our fleeing, and that was not fleeing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is the and, counter to fleeing. <laughs> and that would be to send Gastron in there to collect all of these goblin corpses and bring them my way uh so we can whip up some poutines to feed these hungry uh raiders that are going to be famished right away after killing and slaughtering goblins all all evening it's a good uh opportunity to make some quick cash i appreciate your business sense this is this is entrepreneurialism as its finest you can see how they started a business together <laughs> to be clear are you using the goblins like are you like um using the goblins as your like puppets or are you using the goblins as your meat uh both <laughs> okay cool. depends on the scenario and situation yeah. all right <laughs> nope. so... we'll sell it as something else <laughs> so gastron uh no. You you need to actually get yourself free then. Um, well, I am right now preoccupied uh, licking myself clean. That's fair um, because <laughs> this gravy is delicious. It's that's that's fair. Half the reason Wait. I got into this is Donarius's <laughs> acumen for gravy. Wait, sense. can't we still carry him out? Well, I mean, if the if the plan is now to make poutine, are you guys arguing plans here? Because because Donarius wants to make poutine for the adventurers and make some money. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, where? Sorry, I need to speak in character. Tenarius, where? Where do you want to? Where do you want to set up? We we need to be out of far enough away from these goblins that they don't recognize us. Uh, like where? Where are we currently? Right now, you're like you're on your way out of the camp. Your cart is nearby, and on the other side of the camp is where the fields are, the mushroom fields that are being raided by the the raiders right now. Okay, so we're we're still like a, a good like a, a distance away from the goblins and carnage. Yes. Uh, so I would say let's gra go to our cart and move a little bit closer to the uh, the carnage that is currently happening, and not too close. Um, but then we can start setting up, and maybe one of us can go in and bring them our way. Bring right. bring the the, uh, the adventurers the adventurers the our way. <laughs> All uh, right, and Gastron would be also trying to grab those corpses and bring them back. The god uh, corpses. All right, all right. So what do you what does everyone think of this plan then? I'm into it. I'm happy to do anything that isn't making fucking snow cones. <laughs> it's 
I can if I, I'm just stirring gravy all night, that's fine as long as I'm not making s fucking strawberry flavored snow cones for another day. I'm right. I'm happy as long as we uh we continue with our with gone in my vibe of camping always just outside of the action, kind of at the entrance. Yep. I think it's <laughs> thematically similar to the dungeon. So as long as as long as we can kind of just get ourselves out of town where because these adventures don't know us, right? No, no, no. They're just some random punks. Yeah, so if we kind of use this whole, like, pig luau maneuver to get out the gate, and, I mean, can we also just drag the cart and skip the corpses? Uh, I mean, you guys can skip the cart. Uh, move them over. You guys can drive the cart. Uh, Great. You guys can do anything you want. Let's do it. However we however we get out the gate, I'm happy. And wherever we choose to set up, uh, I'm just going to start licking the barbecue sauce off Castro and going, oh, sure. This show is the most delicious. What kind of thing are you? Are you a person? Are you a... I'm a half-elf. Well, if this ain't the most delicious half-elf you can get around here, I don't know what is. All right. And the... As the gravy begins to heat up again, and the smell of freshly cooked fries and freshly cooked meat waft into the air, these adventurers almost drop their weapons out of interest and wander over to this poutine stall. Hell yeah. And Got as Daenerys guests, they are famished. They have been butchering innocent goblins for a few minutes now, and they have worked up an appetite. Do they like come and go? They're like they slaughter a few and then yeah, they like, take like, shifts, right? Yeah, they're basically like, oh, let me give me a taster, see what's up here, and they take a couple bites of it. And they're like, ah, oh, some good poutine. I'll be right back. And there's a here, there's a rating coach on this on yeah. the sidelines that's like tagging people in and out, and he's yeah. like, all right, you're out. You get back in there. <laughs> and then you hear a, a gurgled squeal of a goblin's throat being crushed, and then another guy shows up and be like, oh man, that was that was some hard work. I'll take a poutine as well. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, neat. Yeah, so that's, I think, how we're going to finish this off since we'll have 10 minutes for sort of closing stuff and like that. You guys successfully escaped because goblins were butchered by adventurers and you capitalistically exploited this slaughter to make money. Mm. I love it. Hell yeah. Perfect, Perfect. act break. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Oh, there it is. <laughs>
Thank perfect, you. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having us. Do you guys have anything you want to kind of, I don't know, pitch the public on buying, uh, especially if you want to clarify which game is the real game and which games we made <laughs> up? Because some people might have gotten a bit lost in that shuffle. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, Dice Command is the real game, um, surprisingly. Uh, it's got dice. It's got commanding them. Um, it's <laughs> it got just everything. it's got everything. Literally everything. Um, no horses yet, but it's got uh, combat, worker placement, action selection, uh, and we just engine building. <laughs> engine building, and we just uh, we're like finishing shipping to our Kickstarter backers now. Uh, we'll be opening an online store next week. Um, we will be at Calgary Expo next weekend, and then Edmonton Expo a few weeks after that. Um, so yeah, <laughs> come say hi, check out the game. Um, yeah, and cool. I would be happy to confirm I am unbiased. The game is good. Um, I am very stupid and had a hard time learning it, but there are some wonderful FAQs online, and uh, yeah, I genuinely think the game is fun to play. That is your uh, moan of sincerity for the day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll just kick uh, Sam here out. And Tyler, now that Sam is gone, uh, do you kind of want to get your comeuppance? Do you want to shit talk him a bit? He was kind of, you know, trancing you all night. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't really have, have too too much to say. <laughs> it, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, oh, it will I'm, be. I'm good. <laughs> all right, Nicole. It's just you and me. Okay. Do you have an anecdote to leave us with? Um, I did not. I, do. I anecdotes are yeah, and anecdotes are your thing. I'll leave that to you. What do you got for us? All right. So since we're uh, in the, um, I thought I kicked everyone out. Uh, so since we are in the vein of spoiling things tonight, and why not spoil a little more Lord of the Rings? So. I would like to spoil the alternate draft of The Hobbit that never got published. So, and this is a this is a fun little bit of trivia. And if you haven't uh, if you haven't had a chance to read this extremely obscure manuscript that uh, only one copy exists, well, it's too late. Or just pause everything now and go find it. So, in this original version the dragon smog didn't lay on gold because it just, it felt a little too generic and that's not what Tolkien wanted at the time. So he thought what's going to be unique about, you know, these dwarves. So the dwarves would, you know, they did their mining. That was the same in this book, but once a month, there was a very special day where all the dwarves moms would bring them like a special hot lunch right in the middle of the day, you know, instead of having to pack it all in and eat lunch cold, the the moms would bring them down and be like, yeah, here, uh, this is just this is a special day. Work extra hard. Here's like a piping hot uh, salami roll. That's what Dora's ate in this draft. And the, the the central conflict in this book was that the dragon had moved into their territory and would intercept all these caravans and would often you know maim or kill the mothers and take all of this food away from them and so the you know the miners were depressed they were hungry and they you know went out and recruited Bilbo for some reason to go and try to go and slay this dragon that was deep in its cave and it was always trying to hoard mother lunches 